Hello and welcome to Writing Today. Before we get into this video, I do want to say thank you to those who have supported me on my last two videos. I have seen uh, a lot of uh, feedback from you guys, comments, and I really appreciate it. It's always good to see that people are enjoying the content. And to round off this sort of cyberpunk series, I'm going to be ending it off with a bang. This is a toolkit video. I've done toolkit videos before, which include a lot more advice, tips, facts and ideas for writing a certain genre, and this one's going to be focused on the cyberpunk genre. So settle in for a longer video this time. But if you want to read this blog post, you can find it on my website, thepentsleuth.com. And if you do enjoy, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, as it helps me out a lot. With that said, let's get into the very first section of this toolkit. Now there are many types of cyberpunk stories. You can create any story you want and fit it into any genre. If you already have a good idea for a story and want to pursue it, then check out the next section in this video. However, if you are interested in writing a gripping cyberpunk story, but just need some idea of a plot that works well in this genre, stick around. There are a few to choose from, and I'm sure you'll find one that is to your liking. The very first plot type is the Underworld plot type. It is a story that follows a character's rising through the underworld and encountering all manner of seedy individuals in a cyberpunk dystopia. It could mean they join the criminal underworld, building their own faction or working their way up the food chain and establishing a gang, or it could mean approaching the underworld with a different objective in mind, such as bringing down the criminal underworld or seeking justice or answers for an earlier scene in the story. In average fiction, this is usually a revenge arc. In this plot type, you have an opportunity to present a down-to-earth world space, showing the reader the poorer and dirtier side of a cyberpunk world. You deal with the criminal element that is present in cyberpunk worlds, and there are plenty of chances to write a gritty or action-packed scene. The second plot type we have is the Transcendence plot type. In this plot, we approach the more philosophical side of cyberpunk stories. The transcendence plot is about becoming more than human, usually a transfer of consciousness into some cloud storage or robot body. It could be the protagonist has their mind transferred as punishment or to save their life. It could be the antagonist has their mind transferred in order to preserve themselves or attain greater power or influence. There are many possible reasons for one to turn themselves into a digital consciousness, the most common one being immortality. These kinds of stories can take place in any level of social hierarchy in your cyberpunk world. Typically, these kind of plots give you an opportunity to address the different viewpoints on storing one's consciousness. The third one is the iRobot plot type. I call it the iRobot plot because it's my first encounter with the idea of synthetic life versus natural life. I talk more about this topic in a previous cyberpunk video, which I recommend you check out if you haven't already. These kinds of stories give you an opportunity to talk about what makes up humanity. You can challenge the biological aspects and the metaphysical aspects of what makes someone a human. You can take this discussion further when you approach synthetic life and whether it should be considered equal to natural life or not. And in regards to this plot type, there are many ways that you can approach the story. It all depends on your religious beliefs, your ideologies, or the kind of story you want to tell. In other words, your story could end with synthetic life and natural life learning to coexist, or it could end with a battle for control of the earth. And those are just a few ideas that are very popular with the cyberpunk genre. You can use one of those ideas for your entire plot, or you can combine several of them to create an entirely new plot. Now let's move on to the next section of this toolkit. What makes cyberpunk punkish is the nihilistic approach to many situations, the deconstruction of society, and the dystopia feeling that is created by a shocking difference in classes. The average masses are made more punkish to underline the rebellious nature that is building, or has built, in the classes below and that of the rich and powerful. Those who have the money and connections to live in luxury at every given moment 
often see themselves as higher beings, above those that struggle to find two credits to rub together. If you plan on writing a cyberpunk story, you need to talk about these social issues, this hierarchy that is established in your world space. You need to talk about those who envy the higher classes, and those who look down on the lower classes. Typically, these situations are powder kegs waiting for a spark. The rebellious lower classes are waiting for that one last push to make them fight against their tyrannical overlords or the wealthy established families and corporations. The higher classes are looking for ways to ensure their power over the lower classes in order to maintain the status quo. Throughout this world space, people in both classes generally have a nihilistic view on the world. It is most likely this view that resulted in so many immoral decisions that led to this dystopia. If one finds life meaningless, it is very easy to take steps down a path that is easier, more selfish, destructive, or chaotic. Those smart enough know how to take advantage, and those apathetic enough will let them. Of course, the punk and cyberpunk could also relate to the style of the world. It could be the clothing, the hairstyle, the use of slang. There are so many ways one could picture a cyberpunk world. Of course, this once again comes down to you as a writer. Do you want to create a cyberpunk world that looks more like a cyberpunk world or acts like one? You can also have a combination of both, where you have this 80s nightmare looking place with these uh, strange looking hairstyles and clashes of colour, everything is sort of popping. Whether it be the styling or whether it be the mentality, all of these will underline the cruel and hedonistic aspects of a cyberpunk world and make that so much more immersive for your reader. And having talked about the second half of the word, it's only right that we talk about the first half. While the punk part is about the general theme that makes up these kinds of stories and worlds, the cyber part establishes the setting and time period. Cyberpunks are generally set in a classic futuristic space, where the cars fly, robots do most of the heavy lifting, and everything has lights on it for added style. Cyber comes from cybernetics, so there's a lot of focus on cybernetic augmentations in cyberpunk stories. That means parts of the character's body are replaced or improved with machinery. It could be their eye is replaced with a cybernetic one, in order for them to see further away, or just see it all. It could be that there is a chunk of metal attached to their arm that makes them shoot with a steady hand and robotic accuracy. Their skin might be replaced with a metal shell, making them shiny and a little bulletproof. There isn't any real limit to the cybernetic augmentations you come up with. Generally speaking, cybernetics are voluntary improvements or replacements of certain parts of the body in a cyberpunk world. Where the characters have a problem with removing healthy parts of their body in exchange for machinery and other synthetic materials is entirely up to you. And that is another part of the cyberpunk world space where you can include conflict. You could have a sect of people that prefer not to have cybernetics. Perhaps another part of the population is firmly against it and now looks down on those who make use of cybernetics. And then there are those who consider cybernetics the next step in evolution. And perhaps taking themselves further is a way of making themselves more superior to those around them. But the main point of this section is that if you want to emphasize the cyber part in your cyberpunk world, you're going to have to create characters with cybernetic augmentations. Whether getting cybernetics is actually cheap and ordinary, where everybody almost has them, or it is something rare and only for the rich and powerful, is entirely up to you. Now, it doesn't hurt to do a little research, especially if you are unfamiliar with the genre and have only just taken an interest in writing it. So, here are some popular cyberpunk novels that might interest you. The first is one I've already done a review on, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. It's a good book, and it's a book that Blade Runner is based on, if you are familiar with the movies. Nowadays, this is one of the most popular examples of cyberpunk media. Next, we have Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, a popular book and also movie. More about video games, but still, it is set in a cyberpunk dystopia. 
Third on this list is Neuromancer by William Gibson, a gripping, fast-paced book that really captures the cyberpunk feeling that I know so well. Another book I recommend, and I'll also be posting a review on shortly, if it's not up already. Next we have Snow Crash by Neil Stephenson. It's not a book that I've read just yet, but it has come well recommended in the cyberpunk genre, and until I read it, I'll place it here at the bottom of the list for now. Of course, those are only popular cyberpunk novels. If you like to have visuals to work with to give you inspiration, there are plenty of movie and series in this genre as well. So here's a few that you can check out. First we have Robocop, the 1987 or 2014 movie. It's a classic icon in the cyberpunk genre. It will also give you a good idea of what it looks like when the cybernetic obsession goes too far. After that we have Blade Runner, Blade Runner 2049. I've already mentioned them earlier in this list when I talked about Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? But they definitely deserve a second place in the movies and series slot. Next we have iRobot 2004 movie. It's also a book by Isaac Asimov, a very popular book, especially if you want to get familiar with the rules of robotics. It makes great inspiration. But the movie will give you the visualization of a semi-dystopian world. Especially if you intend to create a story surrounding synthetic life versus natural life. It will make for good inspiration. Ex Machina 2014 is another movie about synthetic life versus natural life. Elysium, also 2014, a great cyberpunk movie that emphasizes the gap between classes. Next we have Ghost in the Shell and Akira. They are two classic anime movies worth looking at as well. And that is just some cyberpunk media that will help give you some inspiration when writing this genre. Whether you prefer reading the books or watching movies and series is up to you. There's plenty of inspiration for you to browse. And now for some tips for writing the cyberpunk genre. The first tip I've already mentioned in every blog post on science fiction but I'll go through it again quickly here. When describing advanced technology, you don't have to explain how it all works. You need only compare its form and function to examples that the reader might be familiar with. For example, it was the size of a refrigerator and it made a similar humming. The second tip would be to concern yourself with the average lifestyle of your characters. What machines do people encounter on any given day and what habits do they have? Let the reader know that this world is different by showing them the differences. If you focus your attention only on the extremes, they will have trouble picturing the scenes the way you want them to. It will be easy to assume that such a future is no different from the present for the average person. The third tip is more of a suggestion. Try to include a character in your story that is sure of their goals in the beginning, but as they encounter various events throughout the story, their views are challenged. It could be they are of a certain class and they learn more about the life of another class. It could be their values are challenged by the people they encounter, or they find logic in their values lacking. Cyberpunk tends to include these characters who learn to examine themselves and their beliefs, learning more and ultimately redefining themselves by the end. These characters are usually present for the reader's benefit, giving the reader's thoughts direction and helping them feel the right emotions when a certain scene transpires. The fourth tip is to take your time in the slow moments. Cyberpunk novels are notable for having impactful scenes focused on the meaning of life, the value of human life, our place in the universe, and all manner of philosophical questions that help the characters realize how far morality has declined for such a dystopia to exist. Action scenes are a lot easier to write than these slow moments, and for most writers, it's better to put focus on the action scenes and have the slow moments piece them together. But in the cyberpunk genre, especially if you're looking at popular novels, it is these slow moments that are far more important. The action scenes are more what pieces them together, that continues the plot and story. But in those slow moments, you are focusing on deeper questions and you're growing your character as the plot progresses, so it is important to take your time, especially since some of these require a lot of you as well. Taking the time to answer these questions for yourself will make it easier for you to write these scenes. So when you do write them, they will come off as a lot more interesting and realistic to your reader. And 
And that brings us to the end of the cyberpunk toolkit. Now this won't be the last time that I talk about the cyberpunk genre, but it will be the last time for a while, as I'll be focusing on different genres to come. Yet if you have any questions or thoughts you want to share on this genre, perhaps any advice you would give beginner writers looking to tackle it, let me know in the comments below. I've also already started work on a cyberpunk writing course. It will cover a lot of what I've mentioned already, but it will include a lot more guidance and tips and advice for writing the cyberpunk stories. So if you want more professional advice or guidance when writing your cyberpunk story, I recommend checking out my writer's workshop. Every tier of my writer's workshop gives you lifetime access to all my courses, past, present and future. You can sign up today or any other time, but once you do, you'll have access to hundreds of hours of writing advice that's constantly growing. So if you're interested in checking out my writer's workshop, there's a link to that in the description below. And there's also a link to a free writing course should you like to check out my teaching methods before you consider joining up to my writer's workshop. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next episode of Writing Today. Bye for now.